So, Dr. Swami, your views on uh, the fact that there is a uh, Japanese soldiers are um, who are associated with INA. Yes. Uh, they are doing a reunion in uh, memory sure. of Netaji. Sure. What do you think about this event? Well, it's necessary because uh, after all, it was a revolutionary time. Uh, of course, Japan lost the war, so many people don't want to remember many things about Japan. But in India, we have uh, always had a soft corner for the assistance given by Japan to Swachhata Bose. And uh, we, this is reflected by the fact that we are the only country which didn't seek reparations from Japan after World War II. Um, now, uh, Subhash Bose um, did what was considered impossible in those days, that he collected at least 50,000 soldiers. And uh, these soldiers were those who were defeated uh, while they were part of the British Army or some who have volunteered and so on. And he built it into an army which temporarily did uh, liberate India. Indian national flag was first unfurled in Port Blair in Andamans, then later on in uh, Nagaland and Manipur, etc. And uh, well, certainly uh, Subhash Bose was not able to drive out the British from India physically. But uh, all political revolutions are not physical, uh, physical successes. They, it depends on what they do to the mind. In Rajasthan, uh, Rana Pratap did not win the major battles. Uh, and But he lived quite badly. He was badly persecuted. So he ultimately had to live in a forest and um, you know, make chapatis out of dried grass. But today in Rajasthan, people remember Rana Pratap for his valor. And we have uh, throughout history, always place valor, courage, sacrifice above victory. Victory also we, we respect, but that comes second. Take for example, uh, besides Rana Pratap, you go to any other part of India, you go to uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, there is a man called Katabamun Raja, who the British hanged in public. He is respected. Uh, and if you ask who fought the British, they will first give the name of uh, um, Katabaman. You go to Karnataka, Rani Chennama, uh, Rani Jhansi. Uh, these people all lost. And Subhash Bose may have lost, but he created so much fear in the British that but for him, the British would not have left India. The British decision to leave India, and you can imagine the atmosphere at that time, Britain had won World War II. They were, had been perceived as one of the most powerful countries of the world. And the man who led it uh, was Winston Churchill. At that time, he was still Prime Minister. He hadn't been defeated in the election. So at that time, the name of Subhash Bose is what revived India. Because Quit India movement had great effect on the mind of the people, but it was a failure. And uh, the spirits of in Indian freedom fighters was down in 1944. And after the British won the war, it was even more down because uh, people thought that the British would be defeated and then we will get freedom. But actually the British won the war. But uh, when the naval forces, the INA trials, <coughs> these, uh, the British saw the atmosphere that had uh, been built and the name of Subhash Bose uh, instilled so much uh, uh, devotion that at that stage, as Payment Attlee told later on a private visit to India in 1948, he told the Chief Justice of Calcutta High Court uh, that uh, it was Subhash Bose's threat, <coughs> Subhash Bose's threat which actually uh, made them decide now we have to leave. Mahatma Gandhi was convenient because they could hand the power to him. And they knew that Mahatma Gandhi would not chase him. And therefore, somehow, Subhash Bose's uh, legacy must be aborted. And, uh, but we have to leave anyway because it's only a matter of time before in the name of Subhash Bose, uh, the whole
whole country will go up in, uh, in arms. And then the British are no match. You see, the British are always in small numbers. I mean, even at the height of World War II, there were only 100,000. Generally, there were 15,000, 20,000. Now, if India rose as one, then the British know that 10,000, 20,000 troops is nothing. So it's really the mind. And that's what Subhash was liberated. You know, Mahatma Gandhi did it in his own way. But Subhash Bose fired the imagination of people. And, uh, and the, the revolt of the uh, mutiny, the revolt of the navy, uh, the revolt of soldiers in different parts of the country, that scared the British to leave. So I would say that uh, uh, Subhash Bose has, the, uh, along with Mahatma Gandhi, because Mahatma Gandhi built an organization. Subhash Bose didn't have uh, time to build an organization or the opportunity. In fact, when he was elected president of the Congress, he was literally made to leave it. But uh, the, the uh, fact of the matter is that Subhash Bose did what was the most important in any country, the mindset. As you know, people will be, we can fight, that the spirit he will still. The great tragedy that we still don't know what happened to Subhash Bose. And uh, <clears throat> we know that he didn't die in the air crash. What really happened, the, some of the stories we have heard are very disturbing. And the fact that the government's consistently refused to declassify files shows that there's something rotten that had happened which made Subhash Bose disappear. And, uh, but his memory will live on forever. And uh, I'm very glad that uh, functions like such as re uh, uh, reunif reunification or the uh, getting together of, of former soldiers who served with Subhash Bose is being happening in Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo uh, is a place which was dear to Subhash Bose and therefore dear to India. And, uh, and I would congratulate the organizers for thinking of this.